This is uh, Richard back at you. Today we're working on a 2007 uh, Chevrolet pickup. Uh, he brought it in for a service and uh, the pan and the fluid is just really black. It's got 200 something thousand miles on it. So he decided just to go ahead and go through it uh, while he had it in our shop. So before we tear this down though, you got to go subscribe on our YouTube channel before I tear it down. One, two, three. No, I'm just kidding. Let's get her tore down. But he is serious. Go subscribe. Yeah. <laughs> it's just got the stock torque converter, TMBX. You can identify it right here. We'll be putting the exact same one right back in it. So that is how they identify the GM converters. So it's pretty brown for sure. Yeah, it looks like motor oil. It does. Real, it's kind of like. Looks real thin, like water. Isn't it crazy looking there. But this is a 4L65. Uh, this is a pretty late version right here. Let's get me out of there. I'm telling you, I fought it getting it out. The tranny was stuck really hard to the motor. Oh, everywhere it was stuck hard. Uh -huh. Some of these things are really hard to get off the back of the motor. They just pin so tight to the dowel pins and stuff that you almost break the case. And this has just got your standard servo in it. We don't see any to, uh, expect to see anything unusual in this tranny here. Except uh, a lot of wear. You can tell it's been hot before. It seemed like. Yeah. Well, make sure you get that <laughs> flush. Because <laughs> if you ever have to chisel one of these bolts out, you're in trouble. Bingo, baby. There it is. I like it when GM did this because you can just put so many different bell houses on these things. That, uh, Makes it so universal. Got your seal retainer. Look at that. Retain that seal and they're really good. Then I took it off with my hand. But like I say, that's why we always glue these on. These do work really good if you glue them on. Uh, but just physically sitting there, then they're kind of... Nice and dirty, huh? We woke up to about two inches of ice and snow this morning. Just covering the ground. I'm really shocked. The pan looks really clean. This thing must be running really hot to turn the fluid that color. Could be starting to lose lockup, starting to slip it a lot. But that's just really, really dirty. The filter's really dirty too. Uh, just probably lacking some maintenance. No. Like a maintenance. <laughs> Got your parking retainer here. Close in park. Got that click, click, click and fill. And I turn that thing down. Call you back. Call you back. So this here is, uh, that was my son actually calling me. Uh, now here's your input speed sensor. That's why they call these the 65s. And the 70s too, they added a speed sensor down through here. And this is the connector. You'll notice it'll be the three wire plug over to the right. I almost smacked him in the face with my elbow. Yeah. Gotta get him what he gave me one day. No, I'm just kidding. Get this off here real quick. I turned my phone down and it still was loud. That's kind of crazy. Get that little clip out there. This is your PWM solenoid right here. A lot of times these little filters fall out. See how that turned? Mm -hmm. You just kind of look at them. Some of them will fall out. If they fall out, just throw them away. If you blow them out with air or anything like that, just get you another one.
Then you got your main lockup solenoid here. Maybe need to clean these up, make sure they rattle. Always run codes on these trannies before you take them apart. Uh, if you got a code for the solenoid, to go ahead and replace it. If you don't, then just clean it, make sure it rattles, because these really don't have a high failure rate. At least they got a cover on these on the top, but they still get so much trash in here. It's hard to believe the switch it even works with that much trash, but it does. You'd think it'd be like self-cleaning, where it just keep cleaning, 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 and never right. make trash as much pressure goes through this tranny. Or at least circulate to the bottom. Yeah, the it's to the pan, but it doesn't. Now this here will not have the lockup valve blocked or anything like that. It'll just be a two-piece valve in here with a spring. Now we will go ahead and block this, whether it's a 65 or a 70, no matter what, we block every one of them. And believe me, it works so much better. And make sure all your shift valves and stuff are free, especially this one right here. This is your one-two accumulator valve. There's actually two accumulators for your one-two shift, and this is one of them. So, and this is your second one. So this valve actually has to open before it gets fluid to this one, so that's how that works. Got your accumulator here too for your forward engagement. You want two shifts solenoids. Let me show you this here. I take this apart. Pull that valve out of there like that. Grab this plastic piston, pull it out. If it's plastic, get rid of it. Now you can go back to the early ones and, and get the aluminum piston out of there and put it in here. I don't know why GM went to a plastic one, but you can go get the early design and, and put it in there, retrofit right in there. So pretty neat. A lot of nasty film build up. Yeah. <laughs> Now, you notice this thing here doesn't even, probably don't even have a spring in it. It might have a small one in the bottom just to keep the piston from bottoming out. See, it has that little tiny one in there. And what we do is we'll take and still, even though this is like that, I will go find other springs and put in here and stack this piston to the top. They make spacers we can put on this deal to stack this up, to even lift the spring up. Some of your shift kits even make it. So you still want to get this uh, piston all the way to the top. Get that seal off there. I have springs everywhere around here that I can use, but you see that? We want to get that piston all the way to the top. That way it starts plying that band instantly right when it starts touching that piston. Now if you notice here, we got this bonded gasket stuff going on again. Right here. If you notice the gasket's made to the plate, it's glued to it, don't come off. And it's got the screens embedded into the, the plate. See so right here, they actually added one right here on this one. You can see it here. You got this one here and this one here. Your early design, you know, it's a add-on filter like, uh, like these right here. They'll pop in here. Then you have another one. Excuse me, that'll did I get you. Woo! Took a bath. Almost, and then another one will pop in here, a different size that's in your kit. But these you leave in here. We will not grind this gasket off. We'll put this gasket right back on. Some of them have an indention. You kind of feel it, kind of lock it back in place. But these gaskets are so hard that even being tightened down before, it didn't indent it. I mean, it's just really almost as flat, like it's never been applied. Wow. So 
Don't try to grind it off and put a gasket on it. They do have gaskets that'll come in your kit, but you'll end up destroying the plate, and then you'll be looking for a plate. So, same way with this one here. We're gonna go ahead and block it all the way to the top again. Use this piston, just get you another one, chunk the old spring away, the and then uh, stack it up like I've showed you guys in their other videos. So. You have one check ball right here. And then there's no other check balls here. Actually, in this tranny here, there's only one check ball you have to physically put in. So it's pretty hard to make a mistake on the check balls. Uh, but uh, if you left them all out, it'd just shift firm or something like that. So, but if you leave that one out in the trough right here, if you leave this one out, you're in trouble. You can leave every one of these balls out but this one. Yep. If you leave that one in, out, you're in big trouble. That ball there keeps it from going into forward and reverse at the same time. So that's what that ball does. And you notice you got your hard ring right here for your pump instead of your rubber O-ring. Some of these are really tough to get oh, out. I'm telling you, it's so hard. All the Some of them are hard to get out. I just have to work on it a little bit. But you can see your sensor right here. It goes in the side. Now, we replace every one of these just because you, <coughs> even if it doesn't have a code for it, you better replace it because if you don't, you can have a problem with it. And then you're pulling the tranny back apart. So the One thing I don't like about this, uh, they kind of destroyed like say if I'm building this tranny or if I got it in the car, I'm going to put a shift kit in it or something like that. This covers the boost valve hole. I cannot change the boost valve while it's in the car where all your other versions I can. But once they added this, they covered it. See, there it is. To take that out, to put a 500 boost valve in there, you can't do it in the vehicle because this physically covers it now. Terrible idea, but that's what they did to us and that's what we have, so there's nothing we can do about it, but... That just tells you you can't do it unless it's in the vehicle or out of the vehicle. This pump looks really nice. Even though this is a brand new tranny, a new version, all that type of stuff. You still want to silicone your silicone right through here. That way you don't have no fluid getting into the vent circuit from your pressure side of the pump. And here it is right here. Right through here, this is your pressure. This is your vent circuit. So you want to make sure you put some silicone there and seal it when you put the pump back together. And here they went to the single spring. Looks like a cone on each end instead of square. That's how you can identify it. I don't know if you could put the dual spring in here and it'd be the same. I've never tried or never asked any techs or anything like that to see. So I just always put it back original. Pump slide. Look for your little spring. Look for your pin anywhere on this. So if you got anywhere here, your, your slide will run crooked. So you want to make sure it's centered with a good pin. Look for anywhere here. Starting to see some wear in the bushing area. You can say it's starting to shine up right through there a little bit. Oh, yeah, the crank sitting down. Uh, sitting down a little bit. You don't see it much on these motors. It's kind of wore all the way around. Mm -hmm. Definitely want to check the flywheel and stuff like that, too, when we get in there. We look at the rear main seal because we check all that stuff before we take them apart. Well, you just see how those stock bands has been really sliding on that drum right there. 
See, that's probably where our heat's coming from. Yeah, it just it, after time, I mean, it just. But these are the best bands with the material on from GM. But like I said, we go back with a wide band that just makes it so much superior. And you can see here where their their band don't cover a quarter of it here, a quarter of it here, where our band covers the whole distance. Actually, I got one right here. I'll just kind of show you, give you an idea how much bigger that band is. Doesn't totally cover it all, but it, it's a night and day difference. Reverse clutch looks good. Always make sure your, your inner part of your bevel goes towards the, the uh, steel like that. Don't put it like that. It goes physically like that. I get him in here like this, and that's not the right way. Because this is designed to smash. Once it smashes, it plugs this hole right here and pressures up. It doesn't have a check ball in this hole. They physically use the clutch to come down and flatten this and plug that hole instead of a check ball. So if you put it in upside down, I don't know if it'll work the same. You know, I've never done it, but if you look at it, it, it would rub on here. See, and that's where you'd probably start having problems with your, your little feed hole right here, start smashing or something, doing something crazy. So it does go like that. That's your big hole. Now you can see your reluctor right here on your input shaft. Uh, that's your uh, sensor reads in your pump. Now, th we did have some of these units come in uh, that had this drum in it and pumping it with a blank plug in the sensor hole. So that tells you they were slowly getting ready to change over. They start adding the parts, uh, but they haven't changed over yet. So that's why we see a few of them coming in here that way. But once GM gets going, they, they start switching it all up quick. This guy is going to be a nice tranny to take apart and build because it just hasn't been touched by any delicate hands out there. <laughs> <laughs> that, I guess that's a good way of putting it, I yeah. guess. <laughs> oh, three, four clutch is just about totally gone. That's probably where a lot of our heat's coming from, too. So, this old tranny's got a lot of miles on it. The old load springs are still kind of tall. We'll check them and see if they're as tall as the new ones. Your engine brake clutch, your forward clutch. Now you can start seeing some clutch teeth wear here uh, where they've been backing up, throwing it in drive, and coming before they come to a stop. It'll start knocking these teeth out. You can start, you can start feeling it. Actually, their teeth are almost half the size of them. Yeah, I don't have them soaking yet. I have to go get some, but. You can start seeing the wear on the teeth. They're starting to come off. This frag is in here real quick. Now this is uh the that's crazy they still use this brass frag, but they do. They they went to a, a plastic body though for a while and got rid of the the, the metal body, but did you notice this is a dual cage like the metal one that we put in there? Well, this is a GM dual cage sprag. So GM did start getting a little smarter and start putting them in there in the later versions and helping, but they stayed with this brass washer. I don't understand why. Because this outer brass washer always wears like crazy, and when it does, it don't affect this hub up that much, but it wipes out the washer. This thing got a big old lip on it right there. It'll just lock right in there. Yep, that sure did. Mm -hmm. uh, see, it locks it in there. And uh, see this one here just flies perfect. Yep. Because there's no wear on this, looks brand new. And on there it wore plumb out. Wow. So the new sprag we put in has got metal uh, thrust rings on it, so it'll be a lot better. And actually, it looks really good here too. 
just some some staining, nothing uh, nowhere, no lips or anything like that. Now, if you notice, this brag here was turning on both races. Mm -hmm. A lot of them you don't see that. A lot of times the sprag will just settle on this one and only spin on this. But this one here has actually been spinning here and here. You can see where it's been done. So a lot of times this brag looks brand new like it's never been used, or the race, I mean. So, pretty crazy. Get that thing out of there yet. Dang, I still can't get it. Bogan yet? Come on now. I can't get that out of there. You got to get it out before you put it in the washer, though. You'll never get it out. So we do have our roller bearing hub here. Get my shell out real quick. Just a stock shell. I almost look like Jim might have started heating some of these up a little bit more. Those look a little bit different color. Yeah, you got your sun gear here. Rubs on here. We just have that single bushing right there that rubs on here really hard, but they harden this so much you don't see any wear here anymore. We used to see tons of wear. But you can see now, look how much wear we have in there. I'm going to strip it. Let me get that out and show you. I don't know why they didn't harden the whole thing, but they hardened this end and not this end. Where the earlier versions, we didn't have no problems with this end, it was the other end. So it's kind of like, man. Oh yeah, that thing. Let me blow. Get out of your shit a little bit better. See how wore out that is. Now, if they'd have hardened that just like they did this, we wouldn't have no wear in this piece at all. That's why we have to replace every one of these. Five five six a week i mean every one of them we do we have to put one in there because we upgrade uh, all of our units to the from the thrush washer styles of this one on every one we do whether it's a 700 4l60 or the any of the e models so we do hit them all same way this sun gear you need to check for any type of wear on the both sides of the teeth because it when you let on and off the gas it applies at this side this side so you just want to look on both sides of that Can you, can you see in here, Trent? Mm -hmm. See how they have this snap ring right here oh, and this wow. anti clunk spring right here? I wonder if they didn't even get it on there from factory. See, it's, it's actually right there, you can just barely mm -hmm. in there. See that? Mm -hmm. That needs to be all the way in there. By the way, it gets past this piece here, too. It didn't come out because they didn't have it all wrong, wrong, but they didn't have it in there where I'd put it. You got your your band strut right here. You don't want to lose. If I can get this thing in here. So if it don't fall out, it's usually stuck in the case right here. So, but you always want to go get it. The last thing in there is going to be that little piece right there. Some of them hang in the case. Some of them will fall right out. So if you leave that out, you're just going to hear clunking in the, this thing rocking back and forth uh, in the case from park to reverse, and it's annoying as heck. So don't forget it. Pop, 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 pop type of sound. It's got a nice wide sprag in it. Now GM did upgrade their sprag assemblies to the big brass ones. They are big, but they did go with the brass uh, cage and stuff like that on their later versions. Race looks good. You want to scotch brought that up really good. Put a new sprag in it. I can get that in there. But I am going to show y'all something too. Once I get this apart, give you an idea. Yep, updated. Now. This is your lower sprag right here. Low reverse sprag is what we call it. It's a manual low clutch and a reverse clutch. So that's what that looks like. But I wanted to show you, man, I don't have, let me go out here to the trailer and grab a retainer real, real quick and kind of show you something.
since I got you on the tube, I just want to show you some other stuff here. Now this is a real early 700 hub for your lower planet and ring gear. This is the later version. You see how they cut this off right here? That's to guide more oil off the edge right here and get it to that planet gear. Okay? When GM went to the 65s and the 70s and their five pinion planets, they went to this one right here. You see how that's smooth? Real smooth compared to these. That's to get that fluid to that planet. Every bit of it. That's why GM did that. It even looks different in the back. Now all your five pinions will have this. This is really the first four pinion unit that I've seen come in here with this here without a five pinion planet. So I don't have a, I already took it out to the trailer, uh, but trash, but I had a five pinion in here yesterday er, that had a slinger on it. Uh, oh yeah. And what they did is that if it has that slinger on it, these pins are hollow. And when they're hollow, that slinger is de uh, designed to guide oil through that pinhole to get oil onto these right here as fast as they can, as much as they can. Because that was a problem with these, is not getting enough oil, so they really want to flood it. And that's how they did it. They just did some technology. Did it that way, so. If you can find one of those, it will upgrade all the way back. So, it, and it definitely, it is a, a lot better uh, piece to put in your tranny, so. This is going to be an enjoyable one to put together. Not a lot of carnage or anything like that, so uh, we'll get this thing put back together. Y'all have a great day.